Welcome back to the Lasting Smile podcast. I'm Dr. Frank Lamar, prosthodontist and clinical founder of Highbridge Full Arch. I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Julian Canejo, our clinical lab director. Welcome back, Julian. Thank you, Dr. Frank. Uh, excited to be here again. Some of the, the greatest conversation, the number of questions that you and I get is technology for the digital capture of the implants themselves. We've talked about initial records. Mm -hmm. We've talked about guided surgery. But now we're looking at capturing the implant positions. As a clinician, I, I have analog option. I have uh, intraoral scanner option. We call it iOS. Mm -hmm. uh, photogrammetry and gametry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, let's talk about, as, as we look at these, we'll, we'll talk about cost and time and all that other stuff. Let's talk accuracy. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're scanning around an arch. We're scanning four, five, six implants around an arch on an arc. Why does accuracy matter? Mm -hmm. I mean, accuracy is um, extremely important in this world of a full arch, right? Because uh, we need two things to be uh, clinically successful in the long term with the framework. We need to have uh, trueness and precision after uh, reviewing uh, for years this topic and, and doing... Uh, I know this is, a, this is of high interest in a lot of the research that you've done. Yeah, for, for years we were not only uh, doing research but also reviewing the, the, the research that was out there from uh, very other uh, prominent groups. And we know um, a few rules now. When we're using an intraoral scanner, we know that uh, the further away each implant is, the more distant there is between implants, more chance of um, inaccuracies. We also know that the more angulation between the implants, that can also lead to more inaccuracies when we want to just make an intraoral scan of these five, six implants. Before we get into the relative accuracies of the analog impression, mm -hmm. the uh, intraoral scan, basic intraoral scan impression, photogrammetry, and gametry, mm -hmm. uh, you remember in dental school when we used to hear about um, uh, 40 microns? You remember 40 microns? Mm -hmm. what, is, what, is, uh, what happens to be, what is 40 microns relative to? To a hair. <laughs> we all heard that explanation, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're talking... We're splitting hairs. Yeah, we're splitting hairs. We're, we're discussing microns right uh -huh. here. Uh, but I think that that's an important aspect for long-term clinical success in, in this world of full arch. You know, ask yourself, how many times have you seen somebody else's work come through your office, full arch? I saw it twice this week, by the way, mm -hmm. where there's a, there, there's a full arch restoration seated on four or five implants and you can see a gap between the implant and the prosthetic at the platform, mm -hmm. and it's not sitting on all of the implants, yeah. right? Why does that matter? Yeah, yeah well, uh, definitely that's going to be uh, overloading the other implants, right? That's not going to be uh, distributing the masticatory forces uh, properly, and uh, at the end we can have implant failure uh, not only prosthetic failure, which is the most common, but if the foundation also fails, then we pretty much have to start over. Right. Going back to that, the lasting smile, mm -hmm. right? Longevity matters. Our patients are making these decisions to have this work done. And I, and I, and I heard it yesterday from a patient. You know, I'm spending, you know, $20,000 on my, on my teeth. I, I, I have expectations. Sure. Right? And the expectations is a lasting smile. And so when we look at the accuracy of the final restoration and how it sits on those implants, and we're talking about the thickness of a hair or two hairs or three hairs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, 40 microns, uh, 150 microns. It's a pretty big difference. Yeah. And I think when, you're, when we're using screw retained restorations that are sitting simultaneously on four, five or six implants, and those screws have to go through a channel and line themselves up within a thread on the internal aspect of an implant. Mm -hmm. what, what tensions are we creating here when, when we're off by 40, 80, 120 microns? Yeah, yeah we're splitting hairs, we're, we're discussing microns right uh -huh. here. Uh, but I think that 
that's an important aspect for long-term clinical success in, in this world of full arch. Longevity matters. Our patients are making these decisions to have this work done. And I, and I, and I heard it yesterday from a patient. You know, I'm spending you know, $20,000 on my, on my teeth. I, I, I have expectations, sure. right? And the expectations is a lasting smile. And so when we look at the accuracy of the final restoration and how it sits on those implants, and we're talking about the thickness of a hair or two hairs or three hairs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, 40 microns, uh, 150 microns. It's a pretty big difference. Yeah. What, what tensions are we creating here when, when we're off by 40, 80, 120 microns? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the... Uh, Key question there, right? So um, we know that clinically acceptable is anything that it's within the range of um, 100 microns. But, um, it sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot, but uh, if you, when you review the literature, I think that's, let's say, the highest of the um, discrepancy that um, mm -hmm. we, we should have. Well, thanks, Julian. I, I really appreciate your, your insights here, and I know that this is a a really a sort of a keen topic and, and you've done a lot of research here. So we'll be back. Thank Thanks, you. Julia.